Hi everybody, this video is to show you how to take through Design Space the new SVG to cut this lovely elf themed Christmas gift box. It's a large box, about 7 inches wide, 18 centimeters, 8 centimeters deep, 3 and a quarter inches, and 19 centimeters high, up just up to the shoulder of the box here. So it's a really roomy box. You get lots of little treats in it or a big gift. You can choose to Obviously, you can cut it in any colour you like, but you can choose to have this trim, this one that looks a little bit like the elf's collar. You can choose to have that, let me find a better picture, just on the front. So you could make, if you were using my colours, you could have a solid green back and solid green sides. Or you can cut it so that the, um, the whole of the box has this red um, diamond shaped or pointy collar on it looking like the elf all the way around the belt goes all the way around the box um i think that's all i need to tell you really let's get into design space and i'll show you how to cut it okay there it is in my library this is a, a really versatile svg and you can do all sorts with it and because of that there are lots of pieces to it but don't be daunted when you see it on canvas it's actually very easy to deal with and we'll go through it bit by bit now but as usual, our first job when you bring in any multi-part SVG with score lines into Design Space is we've got to convert those lines that come in as cuts, which we actually want to be scores. We can't set them to come in as scores. This is something I think that people who previously only used um, access projects and things like that where the scores come in already set, I think they struggle with it with SVGs and they think there's something wrong. But that's just the way it is now. We can't make them come in already set to score you just have to do that little bit of work when you bring it in my svgs make that pretty easy because they're saved in any svg that's been saved as a multi-part file with um score lines will come in an overall group like that but within it mine are in two subgroups and the first group contains every single piece that you every single line pardon me that you need to cut to, that you need to change to scores and the group underneath contains all the cuts and any cuts within them. So we're just going to select that first group. You always click with mine on the second line down in your layers panel to convert scores, whether that's a single piece file or a big multi piece file like this one. That's the name of the group and it selects everything in it. You don't need to click on all the individual layers. Go to your operations menu, click on basic cut and choose score from the drop down. And you can see that they've all been converted now. And because there's more than one set, we have to ungroup them. I'm on the desktop version for PC. And for me, ungroup is here at the top of the layers panel. So you just click on that to ungroup that group of score lines. Then scroll down your layers panel to find the next group, which is all the cuts and any cuts within them. All we need to do there is ungroup. And the third step is to select everything on screen. You can do that by clicking on that overall group at the top of the layers panel, or you can click on the select button, or you could just drag a box on canvas to select everything. However you do it, once it's all selected, ungroup a third time. And so now everything's an individual piece. All the scores are separate, and we can attach the scores to the individual pieces that they relate to. You've got to do that, especially with a big file like this. Uh, because if you don't, you'll end up with a project which Design Space will tell you is incompatible with your machine. I get so many people coming back to me uh, saying that, and it's just because they've attached the whole thing. I think the quickest way to select one piece and its score lines is to just click on canvas somewhere near it, drag a box to more or less enclose it, and then attach. For me, that's at the bottom of the layers panel. And you need to do that for every piece on canvas that has score lines. These red pieces are the um, sort of elf collar trim pieces that go at the tops of these pieces, which are the shorter walls. So you use a slightly shorter wall piece if you're using the um, elf collar trim bit. That's the um, line that goes down the front of the jersey that the buttons sit on. You don't have to use that. You can just place the buttons on a blank jersey. Uh, this is the front of the box. I know it's the front because this section underneath is what folds underneath to make the base of the box. We'll attach that one and get it out of the way. This is the back of the box if you're using the um, trim collar again, the elf collar trim bit. So we'll attach that. 
These obviously are the handles made to look like the elf colour. Um, these grey pieces, which you will cut in, well, you can cut in any colour you like, can't you really? In mine, I cut it in black though. I don't make them black because if I did, you wouldn't be able to see the score lines on the piece on canvas and you might forget to attach them. So I just make them grey and then you can see that the score lines are there. Oops, pardon me. Right, so these pieces here over to the left are what you would use if, just get those out of the way, that's the buttons and the buckle and obviously there's no, um, no scores on those. These are what you would use if you wanted, say, a solid back. So you might want to just make the bag look like an elf on the front, then you could use that. <laughs> I haven't attached them, have I? Attach that one, attach that one, right. So you'd use that in place of those two pieces. You can see how those two stick together like that when you make it. This one replaces those two. So if you wanted a plain back to your bag, that is the piece you would use. And again, if you wanted the plain sides, you can see that that's how they go together if you were making it with the little elf trim top. But if not, you use that green piece there, which replaces those two. The reason they're the separate bases, I thought I might as well throw that in so that if you wanted to make a completely plain Gabletoff gift bag at some point later in the year that's not Christmassy, you would use those three pieces to do that. Obviously, you duplicate the back and the side. We'll talk about that in a sec. But for now, I'm just going to delete those because we don't need them for the elf bag project. Right, so those are all the pieces we need. I'll just go through it again. You don't need to remember, though. It's all in your PDF of um, assembly instructions that you get as part of your download. There's the handles that go top and back, if that's how you're making your bag. That's the bag back. That's the bag front. That's the little um, placket, you'd call it, I guess, if you were sewing. I'll just bring that to the front. Um... Is there no line on it? Is that why it's not showing up? Yeah. Hinge into the front. There we are. So if that was your jersey, if you were using that, you'd pop that there when you assembled it. Then you would, this is your belt. These grey bits, as I said, are your belt section. And your buckle goes on like that. I should really just send that to the back. That would be a lot easier, wouldn't it? Um, and then these join together and go all the way around the sides and the back. Red buttons for mine. When I cut these on another one, I actually made those gold and I preferred them. But you can, obviously, you can do exactly what you want. Your elf doesn't have to be uh, red and green if you don't want him to be. He can be anything, can't he? All right, so it looks roughly like that when you assemble it. But as I say, you don't need to worry. You do get loads of photographs in the PDF of inst assembly instructions that comes with this. So let's hit make it and see what we need. The great thing about this SVG is every single piece of it will cut from A4. I mean, obviously these bits will. That's just a tiny scrap. But this bit, all the main bag pieces are here and they will still cut from A4. You do only get one wall section on a on a sheet of A4, so you do need one, two, three, four sheets of A4 if that's what you're using. And then the red trim also fits on A4. So if you're using A4, you'd need one, two, three, four, five, six full sheets of red and green, and then just scraps of gold and black to make the belt and the buckle and the buttons if that's what you're doing. Okay, so that's if you were using um, A4. I think it's great that it does fit on A4 because it means you've got the option to make this bag really huge if that's what you want to do. I actually cut mine out of, um, well let's show you by 12 by 12 if you're wanting to estimate what paper you need. Again these two will go on scraps so we don't need to worry about those. Let's choose 12 by 12 for the main bag. You can get that out of two sheets and the red trim. Nope. 12 by 12, where's it gone? There. You'd need one sheet of that, so one sheet of 12 by 12 for the red handles and the side trim and the buttons, two sheets for the actual bag, 
and the little um, line that goes down the front of the jersey and then scraps of black and gold or whatever colour you decide to use for the belt and the buckle. I'll just show you from um, A3. No, we won't do it with those because we know they're going to be scraps. Let's show you the green from A3 or tabloid. You need two sheets of A3 or tabloid to make the main bag. I think that's the same if I switch it to A3, yeah. And obviously if that goes on a 12 by 12 and you were using A3, you'd need a sheet of A3 for the red trim as well. But I think it's a it's a nice economical bag to cut. There's not much wastage. And again, I love the fact that you could make it really big if you needed to. Right, that's that, I think. If you have um, any trouble when you come to cut or assemble it, don't hesitate to get in touch. Um, uh, you can contact me on Etsy or Facebook, whichever you prefer, and the links to do that are in the description below. And if you've just stumbled across this video and you'd like to buy this SVG, the link to do that is also in the description below. Thanks a lot. Bye.